Just recently, I made a video about how I've been eating only once a day for the last four years. In total, I've been doing intermittent fasting for nearly seven to eight years, and I don't really plan on quitting. Over the course of this time, I've been doing fasting for 90% of the time and almost every day. But is it a good idea? In this video, I'm going to tell you, should you do intermittent fasting every day? Do you have to change things up? And how to do it? Do it. Most people that I've talked to have said that fasting and time-restricted eating is pretty convenient and they would, you know, do it automatically after getting used to it. I do have to say that being in a fast state may feel pretty good and it creates this positive feedback loop that you want to be in the fast state almost all the time. A few studies have also shown that fasting mimics calorie restriction without needing to reduce calories by activating autophagy and sirtuins in the fast state. These pathways are very much linked to longevity and increased health span. The difference between calorie restriction and fasting is that your body gets used to calorie restriction the longer you do it, and you need to gradually be decreasing your calorie intake all the time to reap the benefits. Does this apply the same way to fasting? Is it a good idea to be fasting all the time to keep on getting the benefits, or do you have to change things up? First of all, let's look at how does your body adapt to different stressors, such as fasting, exercise, heat, and cold. The human body is an adaptation machine that adapts to almost anything. Exercise, cold, heat, starvation, and hypoxia are hormetic stressors that make the body stronger if you get exposed to them in small amounts. The more you do something, the more used to your body gets to that stimulus. If you were to lift the same amount of weights at the gym all the time, you won't progress and you would hit a plateau. The body adapts to fasting by becoming more fat adapted and stimulating certain pathways that promote stress adaptation and energy efficiency. They include AMPK, transcription factors, sirtuin genes, elevation of ketones, as well as autophagy. Fasting can indirectly lead to the growth of new mitochondria by activating SIRT1, AMPK, and FOXO3. This increases the body's energy efficiency, which is great for longevity and energy production, but it can also create mild metabolic adaptation because the body begins to need fewer calories. The body adapts to a lower energy intake by increasing mitochondrial efficiency and decreasing metabolic rate. Basically, you'll start to burn fewer calories to fuel the same level of physical activity. That's why chronic calorie restriction is not enjoyable nor sustainable. It becomes less effective the longer you do it. Intermittent fasting is a way to mitigate metabolic adaptation when it comes to the longevity benefits of calorie restriction. The fastest state is a much more potent trigger of autophagy and sirtuins than calorie restriction, and you can still eat sufficient calories after breaking the fast, while still getting most of the benefits. It's calorie restriction without starvation. To lose weight, you still need to induce a calorie deficit even when doing intermittent fasting. It's just that psychologically, practicing time restricted eating feels easier and less restrictive. As you lose weight and get leaner, you'll inevitably experience some metabolic adaptation because you're carrying less body weight. This means you'll also burn fewer calories at rest. Fortunately, if you burn primarily body fat and build lean muscle mass, you can actually increase your metabolic rate because muscle burns more calories than fat. So the most important part for mitigating metabolic adaptation is to try to build muscle and do resistance training to trigger that growth. If you don't use it, you lose it. You don't have to be inherently hungry to reap the benefits of fasting. However, ghrelin, the hunger hormone, plays a part in stimulating some of the benefits of fasting, such as increased growth hormone, neurogenesis, gastric emptying, and autophagy. It also stimulates AMPK and sirtuins, which are fuel sensors that promote mitochondrial biogenesis. It is true that if you do intermittent fasting every day, it's going to cause less stress on your body. It becomes easier and less effortful because your body adapts to using fat for fuel and it gets used to the fast state. There are quite a few benefits to being fat adapted and being able to tap into your body fat for fuel, such as reduced inflammation, increased energy, and improved mitochondrial efficiency. But switching things up every once in a while and becoming less fat adapted can be quite useful for sensitizing yourself to the stimulus again. The same applies to weightlifting, the same applies to diet, the same applies to anything else as well. If you're constantly exposed to the same type of stimulus, then you need to be putting more effort to get to the next level, so to say. But distancing yourself from the stimulus for a while resets the sensitivity to it and you'll be able to get the same benefits again. If you take a sauna every day, you get used to the heat, and you have to constantly increase the dose, but that's not really clever. It's definitely a sign of greater robustness and body hormesis, 
but you'll also have to expend more effort to get the results. Therefore, intermittent fasting every day is fine as long as you keep on making progress with it and as long as you're not hitting a plateau. You can also overcome metabolic adaptation by just eating more calories during your eating window. A slow metabolism happens because of eating fewer calories. If you eat a bit more on Sundays, you can still keep your metabolic rate high. Wait a minute. However, changing your intermittent fasting schedule doesn't necessarily mean you have to start eating all the time. Research on the eating patterns of Americans show that they spend nearly 16 hours a day in a fed state by starting to eat right after waking up and snacking before bed. Time-restricted eating is a form of intermittent fasting that coincides with the human circadian rhythm. There are many ways you can practice this, but in general, it means you eat all of your calories during the daytime. Instead of eating right after waking up, you wait at least a few hours and stop eating at least 4 hours before bed. Even if you stop following a longer IF schedule like 16 and 8 or 1 meal a day, you should still do some form of time-restricted eating and ideally eat your food within 10 hours or less. You definitely don't need to eat over the course of 12 hours. So what I propose is that you can do whatever type of fasting schedule that you like, such as fasting for 16 and 8 hours, 20 and 4, 1 meal a day, whatever it is. Do that for like 90% of the time and then the rest of the 10% just add an additional meal and extend your eating window a little bit to cause this hormetic response on your body and to sensitize it against the fasting stimulus. If you want to know how to optimize intermittent fasting, time restricted eating, meal timing and food combining, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered. Do it.